RTC1. For anybody new to my channel, I do a lot of gacha games, as well as a lot of JRPGs. This newest gacha game that I've been into is My Hero Academia, The Strongest Hero. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the politics of the game, because there are some flaws. This game has many. I'm going to go over the full game tutorial explanation for the things that have been going on, for the events, as well as what to do in the game, as well as every mode that you can complete in the game or do in the game daily. I'm mainly going to go over these things because some people are having a hard time doing specific modes or increasing their character's BP or getting farther in the game because they're free to play or just don't know which things they can do in order to increase their BP or make their character stronger or do the things that are necessary in order to continue your gameplay experience. As we go into everything that's available in the game, I want to be very clear. I'm not, um, you know, number one on my server, but I'm pretty close up there. I've wailed a little bit, and you can see my rankings for total BP. I'm on server 57. I'm fourth from the top. You know, I'm right there, Malavar. You can see my character. Um, so I am pretty well versed in the things that are in this game. However, I'm not the top because I'm not spending, like, thousands of dollars on this game. I would, I would never do that. Um, let's go into it. I'll start off with the solo mode, and I'll go in from there to the next modes, as well as everything that's available. To give you a rundown of what my character set looks like, so, you know, for context, you know, I have a lot of triple S's, some SS's, some characters I haven't worked on yet, and then even Momo I don't even have yet. So I don't have everybody either. As far as solo mode goes, there's peacekeeping. Peacekeeping is the story mode of the game. You're going to get everything you need story mode wise from this in order to upgrade your characters to bri limit break them from like say 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and so on and so forth. You have to do these little peacekeeping missions in order to get the training materials to br limit break them from one set of 10 to the next set of 10. If you are here, by the way, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and come back for more content as I go through this. If you have questions, be sure to ask as well, because I will answer them as I go through this. Next, we have the supply missions. Supply missions are the basic, you know, get your food, get your money, get your card upgrade materials, etc. that replenish daily. I mainly go for the food, mainly because I am still getting my characters up to 120, still is a main portion of my upgrades is I need the food. Money is also good to do on this if you are running low. I'm always running low, as you can see over here. I haven't done any today because um, most of your stamina will run out pretty quickly. One thing that the devs still do need to work on is allowing your stamina to replenish at a rate where you can do all of these dailies. Because if you're working on the game daily, and you are willing to put in that many hours into the game, they should allow you to have that much stamina without purchasing more if you are keeping up on everything, as well as like having extra stamina left over for the other missions, which we'll get into like night ops, but they don't. You pretty much run out of stamina by the time you finished one set of these, if not, you know, multiple times throughout the day. So you usually run out of stamina pretty quickly. Your food is for upgrading characters from like level 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6, etc. It's not to limit break, it's to upgrade them from one level to the next. Cash is pretty much used for everything. Y you need it to pretty much upgrade 90% of the stuff in the game. You need, as your character gets up to level 100 and plus, you need 100,000 cash credits to upgrade things. It or if not more it gets it gets ridiculously expensive the um pieces here the modules they are for gear allows you to upgrade your gear little by little they can be fused together in order to upgrade your gear higher and higher levels and then for reinforcement this one right here this is to upgrade your cards this one luckily does not need cash in order to upgrade your cards it just tests take a while and the cards max out at 20 normally at 40 for breakthroughs and then 60 for double breakthroughs etc so these cards are useful if you are really trying to work on your character cards which i'll get into later as well 
the next solo operation is Hero Trials. Now, these are limited to a few characters. You can't get some characters from these. Like, you can't get, um, you know, uh, I would say Tok Tokoyami, for example, the bird guy. So you can't get him from these operations. But if you are missing any characters, like an a rank character or a B-ranked character that you don't have yet, you can get the shards from this and work on it slowly if you haven't recruited them yet. Also, to limit break them in a residence form, which I'll get into later, you can also farm these materials here as well. For example, I have shards for Deku, but in order for me to residence him from one level to the next, I have to have 25, mm. so that's why it says owned. Oh, these little things right here is if somebody invites you to an operation. So I currently don't want to do one right now since I'm doing this video, but sometimes I'll look to see if it's an agency assessment or something that I can help somebody out on, and I'll usually put in a little bit of time for that. Next is Night Ops. Night Ops is where you upgrade your chips. Chips are necessary to make your characters have better skills as well as um, different things like damage increase, crit, attack hp defense all these things are added to your character if you have a full set of a certain star chip um so there's six stars five stars four stars etc if you have a full set of them it upgrades your character's abilities by a little bit depending on what the chip says so sometimes like the three chips together will make it so dinky will have more electricity power by 20 percent if he's got six star chips or 15 percent if he has five star chips etc so keep that in mind, better chips, six star chips are the ones you want. There is a little trick in this game where if you see a purple light and you turn off your game immediately, you can go back into it and try to get a, a gold light or an orange light in order to get a five star or a six star chip. But you have to be pretty quick. I usually don't worry about that because I'll get them over time and I'm not really rushing too hard, but some people really only just want the five star and six star. You want to aim for the six star and eventually you'll get them as you keep working on that over time next we have the hero theater now this is for extra portion to the story so after you complete peacekeeping missions you'll be able to watch these little chapters and get some free materials or free i should say gold actually not materials but gold and you'll be able to play these little chapter events which are essentially um free you don't have to have a strong character to do them it usually just does a little event within it Next, we have Operation X. Now, this is a pretty tough game mode. You have to be on your toes about this. As the game mode starts off, you want to have as many characters as possible strong enough for each of these operations. And you want to search the operation completely in order to 100% it. You want to look for every material in there, every box. You want to fight every boss. And your characters only have a certain amount of stamina. They have, it's from the earlier stages, they have like three stamina. As it goes on, they only have two. Like for chapters five, six, seven, they only have like two stamina. And if you aren't watching your character's stamina, you will run out of your good characters really quickly. So you want to use your weaker characters at the beginning and your good characters towards the bosses. Because you get a buff every time you fight one of these bosses, you get a free buff and you can use that buff to upgrade the rest of your team to finish out the rest of the event. And once I hit level 60, I'll be able to do that last operation next. Let's go on to the co-op modes. Now, agency assessment is the one where you want to get as high of a floor as possible. And what I mean by that is if you go to the teams, you'll see that there are different stages, but that there are floors. Starting at floor one, everybody can start at floor one because they have a permit to do so. Floor one is the easiest. As you go up in floors, the enemies, the damage, the time it will take will, will take longer because the bosses have higher decrease of damage towards them etc so if you're going to a higher level floor you have to have a higher bp team even if you're on a stage where the captain level is lower if you're going to floor 20 21 etc you want to be much 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 higher than the average normal person is if you are past stage 10 that allows for high yields for gear so you'll have the ability to get gold gear or be able to get stronger gear than you normally would from floors one through 10, you will be able to get the highest rewards for the, that last couple of days if you do floor 15 or higher. So that's what you wanna aim for is floor 15 or higher when you are strong enough to do so. Don't worry about 
being able to do that if all you can do right now is floor 10. If you can only do the floors before that, just keep working on it and you'll get stronger and stronger as time goes on. You wanna do the floors that are within your captain level as well because the gear that you get is leveled to your captain level. So if you want level 50 gear, um, I'm level 59, for example, I want level 50 gear, but once I hit level 60, I'm gonna want level 60 gear. Even if it's like purple or gold gear and not like, um, or purple or orange gear, and not super strong, and this level 60 stuff will be stronger than my level 50 stuff. So I have to work on that once I hit level 60. Going back out. And I, if anybody's commenting or saying hello or anything like that or hitting like button, thank you. Um, let's see if uh, we can get the chat on. So if anybody's asking any questions, what's up, Caleb Thorne? What's up, Mr. Krabs? Fortnite guy is hero. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that the chat was on because I had accidentally turned it off. Uh, but yeah, if you are here and you have questions, make sure you say hello. Hope everybody's doing fantastic, awesome, and amazing. And as we're going on, this is the rewards you can get. You, I'm going to click right here. You can view rewards. As long as you do 15, floor 15 plus, you'll be able to get that stuff. I'm not going to play Fortnite, Mr. Krabs. I'm going to turn off the chat for a little bit and turn it right back on once I get through more of this tutorial. For anybody that's watching, there are target quests, so if you beat certain levels or you help other people, you're able to get those for the week. Once I hit level 60, I'll be able to get some of these target rewards as well, but the ones that are below that, I've hit every single one because I've been doing all the floors and helping as many people as I can on this. Each character only has two stamina per couple of days that this is available. You only have five high yields and they're located down here to see how many you can get left and that's where a guaranteed orange gear if you're doing floor 10 or above is available after those five high yields are down you can still get orange gear which can be upgraded gold gear by fusing it's just not as likely so that's agency assessments let's go into joint operations these are a once a day um, opportunity for you to get cards as well as those little cart upgrades that I was talking about earlier in the supply missions for reinforcement. This is just something that if you are able to do harder rounds, do harder rounds. Um, and you'll get better cards, you'll fight harder bosses, but whatever able you're, you're able to do with recommended BP or higher than the recommended BP, do it. I always do for right now, um, I do Bakugo at hard mode. There's easy, elite, and hard. Those are the three difficulties. You want to go do the one that's the easiest for you, but I always go for hard because um, I like to challenge myself. Usually my characters have been strong enough to do it um, for a while. I'm sure once I hit level 60, it will be tough again, um, but I'm going to keep upgrading my characters to be ready for it. Next, we have the emergency assessment. This is a once a day thing for you to start and then once a day thing to assist others that are doing it. So urgent handling is where like a specific event happens after you've done three daily quests. And three daily quests, I'll go into that in a little bit, but you'll be able to get character shards as well as cash from this. It's a great way to just get cash for the day as well as help other people get their cash for the day and get a few shards, possibility of getting a few shards. Last, lastly, for the co-op, we have team up. This is one of the newer game modes, and let me tell you, it sucks. <laughs> it is really, tough and not in a way that um is a challenging tough it's tough in a way that if you don't have good team coordination and you don't have people that read the text or people that work together and do the things that they need to do for their team it makes it difficult for everybody and it's a 20 to 30 minute game mode each time and you don't get to like just restart easily if you quit, you have to wait 15 minutes to even jump back in. If you let the timer go all the way out, that's 20 minutes wasted, right? So you just gotta keep that in mind going into it. Be as competent as possible going into this game mode. Number one, in my, my experience, is make sure people are using the chat. Don't go into a team where nobody's talking to each other and it's all just randomized. Go into a team where people are using the chat at a certain BP level for whichever game mode you're trying. Easy, everybody should be 30K or higher. And the boss people, or the people fighting the bosses and the buffs should be 35K or higher. For elite, it should be 40K for the entire team, minimum, and 45K for the characters um, that are fighting the bosses. Obviously, some characters have higher DPS than others, 
but you want to make sure that that's the level you're looking at. And for hard, it's 50 to 55K plus. And, and when I say minimum, it can be really hard even at those levels. The higher you have the minimum or above the minimum, the better off you are. Some people just want to be carried because they're new to the game. And if you're friends with them and there's enough people willing to help out to carry somebody, great. Just know that the rewards are randomized. You're not guaranteed to have high rewards just because you're the one carrying or that you're the MVP. The rewards are randomized, which is fine because everybody's role is important. Nobody should be left out just because they're doing the interference. It's everybody should be doing their part. And if they're doing their part, they're going to get good stuff. Or hopefully, if they're lucky enough. And everybody will get good stuff eventually because you have a chance to do it 12 times in the week. And it resets for each character at the end of the week. But each character only has one stamina. So if you're going to do a game, do your best highest BP people first. Get them each out of the way as you do it. Um, I've only been able to do elite, even though my highest character is like 50k BP. It's because of the difficulty that the game is. Don't expect to really be able to do hard anytime soon at least in the, maybe in the next week or two unless you've whaled leviathan levels of, of cash and and are working with people that are also leviathans so just keep that in mind um you get these rewards that overclock your chips and i'll go into the different upgrades as well but these are some of the materials you get from this event this is the one you have to worry about for a while this comes from elite or from the easy mode but um this higher level one for way way in the future for high higher 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 overclocking chips um that will be done from hard mode so just keep that in mind so that's that game mode oh and for that game mode i want to give one more little caveat if you are playing this game mode my suggestion is that the the yellow team only does buff, buffs and bosses this is how i've won every time with a good team Yellow team does buffs one and three, and then does the bosses. Teams red and green only do interference. Only. Every game I've done with that where everybody works together, those have been the winning games. If the green team does the second buff or tries to do that, 13 takes guaranteed 1,000 damage or 2,000 damage. Um, for that round and it's just not worth it because 13's health which is like the timer is very limited so my suggestion yellow team does buffs then bosses and red and green team do the interference the defense that's it <laughs> that's that's the way that i would suggest for everybody and obviously i've done this I have four out of 12 chances left this week. I've, I've done this many times and won many times. So you can trust me on this. <laughs> and that's it for the co-ops. Next, we have the versus mode. Arena is pretty simple, straightforward. Nobody gets a particular buff or anything from this. Just the characters. The characters at their, at their exact state of what they are available to battle with. Um, everybody will have the same opportunities as long as they have the characters. So that's the only thing that kind of sets uh, some people apart from others is do they have the characters in order to play that character in the arena. There's the regular match battles, which don't change your rank. And then there's the points battles, which happen certain amounts of the day, certain times of the day, and you're able to um, increase your rank. Obviously, my rank sucks because the season just started back over, but I've never really gotten much higher than like I don't know, pro hero, I think. I think I think I got up to 340 or something was one of the times. But it's just really tough because I'm not a great pvp -er. I mean, I can, but I'm not. It's really tough. <laughs> so just putting that out there. It's a tough one. Unless you're really good at PvP. Next is Super Co-op Battle. Super Co-op is a mode where it's an auto P PvP where all your characters fight on um, their own. And there's... For this mode, you formate, can do a formation of six people. I would suggest once you get to the higher levels to put all your people in um, a defensive mode in order for them to keep from the other player winning. Because if the timer runs out and your characters are still alive and they're on the defense, you, that's an automatic win for you. If you're on the offense, um, switch it up as you need. Obviously, it's just set up almost the same as my defense right now for this. But that's only because, like, 
I, I'm not really trying to fight anybody right now, but if I was, I would look at what their formation is and I would change my formation depending on it to try to match them or get higher than them, if that makes sense. So that's what it's at right now. And then um, depending on what height you are in the ranking, you get a reward based on that. So the higher you are, the better it is. And right now, um, you know, I'm making 90 of these materials per hour, which will help in the shop, which I'll get to later. That's, that's what those materials go for. Look at this guy in the top rank spot. And Devil Style, he's got like a ton of BP. This guy's a Leviathan. He's hard to pass. I, I won't be able to pass him at any time soon. Um, going into the next versus stage, we have the Warzone Co-op. This is similar to the Super Co-op in the sense that it's an auto PvP battle. People will fight on their own. Um, let me turn the chat back on in case anybody's saying anything. Oh, nope, it's just the same old chat. <laughs> Sorry if this video goes on. Hopefully people will give me some likes as well as um, check out the rest of my content. And hopefully this helps a lot of people out. But this is pretty much similar where you have three characters at a time fight another character's three characters at a time. And it goes team one, team two, team three. And it just fights in that order. So this team will fight first. This team will fight second. This time, te team will fight third. And you can set it up however you want. There are recommended lineups as well as what people in the top spots are usually using. So like there's my name right there for what I'm using. But some people use obviously different combinations depending on their needs as well as what their characters are stronger at doing. And if you win um, or your characters defend well enough, you go up in points. If you lose um, or fail against an attack, your points will go down. The higher your ranking, the better the receipts from rewards will be. Going on to timed missions. Now these are events that happen every couple of days that will switch up. Depending on the game mode, you'll be fighting different kinds of bosses. You'll be doing things differently maybe stepping up a ladder for ranking on the types of bosses you're fighting. Um, it would be a timed boss fight. It all depends on what the event specifics are. So for right now, it's pretty much a new boss every day for the week. And if you fight each boss, you get two chances to get the materials from that boss, etc. So those are the timed event missions. The next one's going to be a mock contest. And the next one's going to be a virtual battleground. It shows you the time frame that they're going to show up in. Next, going into the heroes. Now, this is this is pretty much where the meat and bones of this game is. It's like, hey, I'm going to upgrade my hero. I'm going to make him the strongest top spot in the rankings. Right now, I have number two, Ochako. She's pretty much my... My Uraraka is my best character, and I use her the most. She's who I've been practicing with the most. Um, you can upgrade the levels through food, like I was explaining earlier. You can change their residence up by collecting shards, and that will make the character stronger with the shards. Um, their skills are based on what their resonance level is. So if you have level SSS, like I do, you have more abilities than characters that are only level S or level A. And depending on their level, um, they can get these abilities, which max out at level 20, which level 20 gets maxed out at around level 90, I believe. It's level 90 or level 100 is when the abilities stop maxing. And then next we have the support cards. I would suggest giving cards that work best with the character. So for example, with Uraraka, I have her main cards. Um, for the active cards, those are the two characters you wanna use that will help them out in battle um, when they use them. The characters will sometimes do it on their own if you have it on auto and you can choose them when you're fighting in battle otherwise. Also, you wanna use other support cards that help your character as well. There is a recommended section where you can see which characters would be best or which cards would be best for that character. I usually pick depending on what I want to do with the character. So I have Recovery Girl there because I want my Uraraka in Super Co-op to continue getting health back even though she's like floating up in the air and stuff like that and attacking. So that's the reason I have that. And then I have the um, Ectoplasm guy because just it, it adds additional 90 attack points. Even though that character is not specifically super good for Uraraka, it helps boost the attack points. So that's what I have for that. Going to the chip section, this is what I was talking about with having three of the same type. So I have three level six chips here and it gives the set effects for having the level three. Level two will have a different set effect or a lower set effect and level and the four star will have an even lower or worse set effect. 
etc. This is the overclocking. This is for the materials that are in the team up and you can get those from that. Um, it only takes one to overclock once. It takes three to overclock twice, etc. etc. It costs more and costs a lot of cash. This is where some of the cash gets really OP, really costing. Next, we have talents. Now, this is from the super co-op using those materials in order to buy um, more co-op points from the battle shop here. This is what I was talking about for this. And if you collect a certain amount of points, you can upgrade their talents. Um, I would go with certain trees that best pique your interest. For example, Uraraka is really good if you have Meteor Storm on her. It doubles the amount of damage that, uh, or the radius. So pretty much if you've got a radius with Meteor Storm, it increases that circle by a huge ton. So you go for that first for other, that character, etc, etc. If you were to do a different character, you want to follow the tree that best helps you out. Oops. So, you know, you can see the, the talent trees. Um, looks like some things have enhanced or something like that. Yeah. And then next we have assist. Assist depends on what they're, if they're SSS, they get three assists. If they're SS or lower, or I believe it's SS, they get three assists. If it's S or lower, they only get two assists. And it pretty much comes from the other characters. You can build that up through affinity and that will make their assist better. It will make their attack, defense, and HP better. Not necessarily the output of damage, but it will make this higher. Next, we have the affinity, which I was just talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to put the chat back on, see if anybody's saying anything. If you are here and you hit that like button, that'd be super, super helpful. You can raise the affinity by collecting stuff from commissions, and that will raise that over time. I'm going back to turn the chat off. Etc. So that's pretty much how you upgrade characters. That's the main way you upgrade characters. There are other ways you can upgrade characters in the future. We just don't have that yet, like getting costumes, get, unlocking certain costumes that will allow for specific increases like attack plus, etc. You can also do a training for the character, which is a good way to get some free gold. Um, I've done it for pretty much yeah, I've done it for everybody. I've claimed all of it. It's pretty much just a little way to show off the character skills as well as familiarize yourself with their combos. Super easy. And then obviously the the all your character's strength combined will allow um, you to have a higher BP increase. Next, we'll go to gear. So gear is collected from those agency assessments that I was talking about earlier. You can upgrade your gear from enhancing them with those modules. Um, the modules will fuse together and make stronger modules depending on which level they're at. You can boost it with other materials that make it so the number of stars on that weapon will go up, which will allow you to burst um, to modify it further as well as hide it, have it a higher level in the future. Modifying after it modifies to a certain level, like level 5, level 10, level 15, level 20, it will get new abilities or stronger ab abilities, like this will have its increase of attack plus 15 um, once it hits R10. It's at R5 right now. And if you fuse a certain number together, you can get a golden material. Now, the golden material will sometimes have an extra effect. As you can notice here, some of mine have an extra effect known as um, Maze uh, Vision, which allows for extra abilities. So you want those effects. Those are really good. If there's a certain one you don't want, you can always sell it in the market and buy more materials that you do need. That's how gear works. Next, we have the recruit, which I don't have any tickets, or I have, I guess, two tickets on me right now. I can even do some right now just to show you how it works. But pretty much if you're going for a regular card or a regular character, you can use this. Let's see if I get a S character. That would be fantastic, awesome, amazing. But the recruit just works. This the signature does nothing. It means nothing. It doesn't, like, I could do squiggly lines. I can do a character's name. It's all just for fun and games, this part. Like, and you can just do that, and it will still, you know, just randomly <laughs> that's how recruiting works moving on over let's go over to the alliance section now you want to pick the best alliance that is active 
that does the daily donations. If they're doing the do daily donations to get some free materials, to get some free stuff, obviously you want to donate the most you can. If you can only do the free one in the cash, that's fine as long as you're doing it daily because you're helping other that you're helping your alliance out to be able to get the cash necessary to do extra trainings, which are pretty much a free way for your alliance to get free materials as well as yourself. And there's an alliance shop, depending on how much you participated in the alliance. And then there's the battle, which happens Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And that's pretty much going to go on tonight as well. In three minutes, <laughs> I've registered for it. So I'll be working on that as well. Or I'll be joining in on that probably after this stream. Next, we have friends. Friends section is a good way to give free stamina as well as get free stamina. You can claim all or you can claim specific peoples. Um, I don't quite know what the, the friendship level does yet because there's been no need for it. It's just like, hey, you're good friends now or you're epic friends. <laughs> it hasn't really done anything. Um, then there's the dorm. The dorm is to allow your characters to do commissions in order for after they've done a commission, if they get mad, they go back to their room where their comfort allows them to be happy again to do more commissions. I'll do commissions in just a second. You can upgrade your room how you want, and it will make the comfort level go up, and it will show how much their mood goes up each hour. You can do some quests for that in order to make get more shop um, money in order to get more stuff to put in your room. And as you unlock more, you'll be able to put more characters in the room. I'll show you here. You can put members depending on, you know, what you want in there. Oh, no. Clear all members. Oops. And also you can get animals, <laughs> which do nothing, really. They're just there for decoration. <laughs> That's pretty neat, though. Next, we have the commission section, which I was talking about, where your characters actually do some extra materials, or get some extra materials by doing these a couple of hour events, and they do it on their own. You don't have to do anything. It's auto-run, and these things help upgrade your affinity as well as your dorm rooms. And the affinity helps the assists. Next, we have your bag. This is where you can check all your items. Super simple. It's got everything that you have on you. <laughs> Next, we have the archives. Archives are just like collected materials that you can get from doing the map um, stuff. There's achievements, extra gold from doing specific events. <laughs> or, you know, hanging out with friends or playing certain modes. Rankings is where you can see whether or not you're how you're stacking up against other players Like how how strong your character is compared to everybody else that's playing um, how good you are doing in the arena or super co-op Or the agency assessments just depending on what you're playing or what you're doing. That's where you'll be able to see those things Let's see what have I not gone over. I think that's most everything your stamina is up here This is your cash. This is your gold and this is where mail comes in for, you know, um, maintenance rewards. If there's a maintenance. There's peacekeeping rewards from doing the chapters. There's event rewards from doing, um, you know, er things as events come out. You'll see sometimes, like, um, a little section here that will say, hey, you know, there's um, a, f a purchase plan. If you do this, you'll get more items over time. That's good if you're into whaling and stuff like that. There's free gifts here. This is daily um, sign-in bonuses, free stamina, which you can get at certain times of the day, whether or not you're sponsor, sponsoring the game, monthly card benefits, um, different passes, depending on what you put into the game, and you can get that material, those materials out. This is also one for our codes. Um, there's codes online that, will, that are not expired yet, so go check those out and get some free materials. It's like 250 gold or something like that. There are some of those online right this moment. I can't remember the text for them though, but just look up online, My Hero Academia Strongest Hero Gift Box Codes. There's also other events that go on, which are little silly events. This one was a matching game. Got some free materials from that. There's special gifts. If you've done a certain number of recruits, you're able to collect these materials. And um, there's also the shop where you can collect different things depending on which events you've done which items you or which things you've saved up on there's also a buff shop i would suggest getting these over time the ones that you would want or that would help you the most um i would say the super co-op one is a good one if you have enough i would do the night ops buffs 
because those will help you get better chips in time. Um, there's also bonuses, top-up bonuses, depending on if you're spending money on the game, etc. And then this is where you can also upgrade your characters, um, not just from the daily stuff here. This is for daily events that you complete, but for weekly targets, you get free stuff here too, as well as level targets. If you're doing these um, different upgrades, you're able to collect more gold, as well as hero rating. Now, this is super important. If you challenge for each character and get their stars up, these stars help you hit specific levels where you get upgrades to attack, defense, and specific um, little passives. You want as many of these as you can get. The higher you can get, the better, because it helps all your characters. Do as much as you can of this for every character. An entrance handbook is just like free stuff as you complete more tasks in the game. I think that's pretty much everything. I don't know if I've missed anything or if there's anything that anybody needs help on. The Alliance drill is going to happen soon, and that's pretty much where you go up against another team. The team we're going up against is um, just for fun, I believe, and we've most won most of our um, events. I don't know if you can see it on ours, but we're rank one right now because we just keep fighting with some of the best characters. Like we, I mean, we're most of the team is really strong. So get an alliance that works on your level and you can participate in regularly. This is where you also do the map as well as daily quests. If you complete three daily quests, you get a free reward. The daily quest can also be rushed if you want. It helps upgrade your city level. If you search around the map, you see these little, um, little magnifying glasses. You want to do as many of those as you can because that's free gold as well. I think that's pretty much everything. I don't know if I've missed anything. If anybody knows I've missed something, they can say so in the comments below. Uh, or, you know, tell other people what they what they want. I can do one of these little missions real quick just to show you how these work. The supply missions. I'll take it off auto as well so I can play. Just to get this last little bit in. So this is obviously movement. Um, different abilities will allow different things. The game does a pretty good job of giving you a tutorial of each thing, so that's a regular attack. These are the support cards I was talking about earlier, the actives. These are the abilities, so for example, that radius you should be a lot smaller if I didn't have that extra talent for it. Um, and depending on what you're using, your character will do different damage, or depending on what card you have attached to them, will have stronger or lower or different abilities. Obviously, their main set of abilities, but I mean extra damage dependent on their builds. That's pretty much it. Hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. I know this is a long video, but it really was mostly a full tutorial of this complete game. Um, some events do take longer. I would say I would stress the most the team up right here. This is the this is the most intense mode. Be ready for it before you do it. Have your characters at least at least one character 30k BP or higher in order to do it. <laughs> just just throwing it out there. It's not going to be easy and it's going to take a while. Um, let's see. Oh, this is also news section. I want to make sure I hit this as well. This is where the upcoming stuff is is go is going to be happening. So you can look up, you know, what new characters are dropping, etc. Settings up here. Settings you change your graphics or if you need help or support, etc. I that's pretty much it. I hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. This has been Malvartis One. Have an amazing, fantastic rest of your day and weekend and so on and so forth. Come back to my channel and go check out the other content and games I have on there as well. And I'm always doing fun stuff. I am, I would say, a super jolly person, so you're going to have fun watching me, hopefully. And, uh, yeah. And I'll enter the battleground real quick, and then that's where I'll stop. But, yeah, here I am with my, my team. Um, let's see if anybody will recognize themselves on YouTube later. Let's see. Sunsets. He's the leader of our alliance. And let's see, Romic, okay. Oh, Opie is a really cool guy. He, he's always on the uh, Discord chat. Um, he, <laughs> he makes fun of me because he's just like, he's like, I hate you when like I have like a stronger character than him. <laughs> but uh, they're good. They're good guys. They're, Mr. Tucker is pretty cool too. There's a lot of people I'd shout out to, but depending on, yeah, who we're fighting, doesn't look like there's going to be anybody. This is where the enemy would show up. And it doesn't look like they're showing up again because we're pretty much dominating. <laughs> so, anyways, hope you guys like, comment, subscribe.
Hi, everybody. This has been the RTS one. Let me see if there's any last comments. Why has... Oh, what's up, Pegasus? How are you doing? What's up, Luis? I just want to say hello to everybody before I head off. What what was why has DFFO become such a boring game? I, I still play DFFO and I love it. Um, it's just I've been putting more time into get this game. Uh, gotcha games do that, you know, it takes time. But I hope everybody's doing fantastic, awesome, amazing. This has been a 40 minute tutorial stream. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you all later. Make sure you hit that like button and tell your friends about my channel. Bye everybody. Stay awesome. <laughs>